certified sex therapist Mark Goldberg joins us today. And Mark, let's kick off today's conversation discussing the psychology behind why premature ejaculation may happen. Before we start discussing the psychology behind premature ejaculation, is it purely a mental issue or is there a physical component to premature ejaculation? Okay, so like uh, erectile dysfunction and other uh, sexual function challenges, Uh, Premature ejaculation is a physical condition. It has a number of potential causes, some of them being physical, some of them being mental or psychological, and probably with a fair amount of overlap between the two. Uh, There are a number of possible um, physical issues that might contribute to or cause premature ejaculation, Uh, That could have to do with uh, pelvic floor issues. Uh, That also seems to have something to do with uh, levels of serotonin in the brain. There seems to be a correlation between premature ejaculation and lower levels of serotonin. Uh, That may also have to do with um, sensitivity to serotonin um, in certain areas of the body or in the brain. All of these can lead to, or at least are associated, strongly associated with, premature ejaculation. Would you recommend a man who is dealing with premature ejaculation get checked out by a medical doctor, um, maybe a urologist or a primary care physician before they go ahead and see someone such as yourself, a sex therapist? That's a great question. So with any sexual dysfunction, um, even if it is rare or not likely to be the case that could indicate some other underlying uh, medical issues or conditions. Um, And sometimes a medical professional can also help uh, to better determine what might be contributing to the condition. So uh, much like with erectile dysfunction, low desire, uh, my recommendation is that a man who's experiencing sexual dysfunction should Uh, speak with at least their primary care physician, if not, and speak with a urologist uh, to at least rule out and make sure that there's no other physical issues um, underlying the uh, premature ejaculation or other sexual dysfunction. And with your role as a sex therapist, I am curious if you see men dealing with premature ejaculation And if you do, what do some of those conversations kind of look like? Uh, So as a sex therapist, uh, premature ejaculation is uh, one of the things that we do treat. Uh, We work with um, a number of men here in the practice who are trying to overcome premature ejaculation. It is a very common uh, condition. I think estimates are somewhere between 30% and one in three men. So 30 to 33% of men will experience or do experience premature ejaculation. Uh, in terms of what those conversations sound like, well, a lot of that has to do with broader conceptualization of what might be contributing or causing premature ejaculation. So generally speaking, um, while a sex therapist like myself uh, certainly makes the recommendation and I only work with men who will go for that medical check. Um, We still will make sure that we understand to the extent that we can what might be uh, at play in terms of the uh, medical side of things. Um, We want to understand the uh, duration of the condition. Um, So we'll ask questions in terms of how long it takes um, for a man, generally speaking, to ejaculate uh, from the start of sexual activity. Um, We also want to know if this has been a lifelong or a um, acquired premature ejaculation. In other words, um, has a man experienced this basically from the time that they have been sexually active until uh, the time they're coming to see us? Or has something happened or changed in their circumstances that have led to the onset of premature ejaculation? Uh, It's also important just to note you know, for, for our listeners, premature ejaculation is a very subjective condition uh, in the sense that there are a number of um, 
qualifications or conditions that need to be met to make a proper diagnosis. Um, so it, one of them is a consistent rapid ejaculation as defined by somewhere in the order of under one minute to under three minutes of ejaculation. The official definition is post-penetrative sex, and that comes from a um, a time when, when sex was being viewed really through a, a heterosexual lens and really looked at penetrative sex. But we continue to apply that definition for any sexual activity. So if a man ejaculates in under um, one minute to be to be strict about it, that would qualify. But beyond that, there has also has to be a sense of distress and a sense of lack of control. So among the questions that we are probing for, um, we want to understand if these conditions are present in order to make that diagnosis. Once we have uh, a working model of what uh, the conditions are of this premature ejaculation, a you know, sex therapist will then proceed to try to help understand what might be some of the psychological factors contributing to that. Um, and that ranges from uh, mental health conditions like um, anxiety, performance anxiety, depression, um, stress, um, as well as um, looking at uh, sexual constructs. And what I mean by that is... Um, what uh, expectations are around sex, um, what factors uh, might lead to excitation, um, and the like. So we're going to look down those two roads as well as uh, looking at people's uh, relationships and how that might play a role. A lot of times pressure or uh, performance anxiety as well as um, Overexcitement, which is a you know, potential factor in premature ejaculation, may stem from uh, relationship factors as well. Okay, I want to back up just a second here. You described premature ejaculation as a subjective condition. Is that, I believe, how you phrased it? And if it is how you phrased it, why don't you just help our listeners out who might not be familiar with subjective that word i sometimes don't always follow all the fancy words um that come up in these discussions these some of these textbook terms now subjective versus objective let's just establish that before i we not, move on not a problem so um ob objective diagnostics um have a lot to do uh with let's say a person we can go with, let's go let's go with covid19 you take a test and if the test comes back positive, you objectively are carrying COVID-19 virus. Um, there isn't a lot of subjectivity to that. When it comes to mental health and um, to a number of uh, sexual dysfunction diagnoses, distress or the level of interference, you know, in, in terms of a person's well-being is one of the conditions. So if a person ejaculates, let's say, in under 15 seconds post the start of sexual activity, um, and their partner thinks that's the best thing in the world. Their partner loves that, and it doesn't bother either of them. We would not make a diagnosis of premature ejaculation. So that's what we mean by subjective, that there is a subjective lens to the diagnosis, um, and we don't rely solely on objective definitions. On the flip side, there is a, a concept where a person will feel high levels of distress if they're ejaculating beyond that three-minute uh, window. So a man may last six, seven, eight minutes, and a partner um, may find that to be inadequate, and he or she may be very critical, which leads to... Um, the man who's ejaculating in seven or eight minutes to develop a distress. So that is something that while it may not meet all the criteria for premature ejaculation, this person subjectively is distressed by their concept of premature ejaculation. The other important thing to keep in mind is that um, when we're talking about acquired premature ejaculation, sometimes a man may have a baseline of 15 minutes and something happens that a number of factors of life may cause him to ejaculate in seven minutes. Now, he's totally outside of the objective measure that we put from 
one to three minutes, but he is experiencing distress because he is now ejaculating at half the time from the baseline that he was used to. So this man is is sometimes more distressed than a person who has always ejaculated at two and a half minutes. Um, and that would be another concept of a subjective premature or subjective relatively rapid ejaculation. Okay. Well, thank you for clearing that up. That that makes a lot of sense now, objective versus subjective. It is important to note the difference. So does premature ejaculation only face people that are relatively newcomers or, so to speak, inexperienced when it comes to sex? Or can it affect people that have been having sex for a really long time? That, that, that is a great question. So I think the stereotype around premature ejaculation um, is that it is associated with inexperience. And I, I think the statistics will show that that is largely an accurate depiction. In other words, um, the vast majority of premature ejaculation diagnoses are likely happening in younger men and in inexperienced men. Some of those men will outgrow that. In other words, um, as uh, sensitivity decreases, as excitation decreases, um, and as uh, men are able to gain more of a sense of control through experience, uh, premature ejaculation would tend to decrease with age and experience. That being said, there are a fair amount of people who do develop or an acquired premature ejaculation um, where they may have a what's what's called in our terminology ejaculatory latency period, which means the amount of time it takes from the onset of sexual activity until ejaculation. They may have had, let's say, an ejaculatory latency of five minutes. I think the average, they say, is 5.5 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, five and a half minutes. Um, and that maybe after 20 years of sexual activity, something changes um, in their circumstances, whether that's internally, relationally, and um, ejaculatory latency goes down to two minutes. So this is something that happens as well, although I would say it is less common. Um, it doesn't mean it's rare by any stretch of the word, but it is the le least, it's the less common presentation the more common presentation is younger men who are inexperienced, who are now who are just starting to learn ejaculatory control. Okay, that word latency reminds me of as someone that enjoys technology, you hear about latency when there's like a delay, right? So I would just encourage listeners to think of latency as that period before orgasm. Is that what latency essentially means in this case? Yeah, we'll... we'll, we'll Keep it very technical here. It's the period before uh, emission and expulsion um, in the ejaculatory process, um, which which do cause or generally correlate with the orgasm sensation in the brain. But if we're keeping this on the physical side in terms of the ejaculatory process, then yeah, it's the latency until um, you know men hit that tipping point um, where you have emission of semen and then ejaculate and then expulsion through ejaculation. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That helps me kind of conceptualize this. Uh, moving towards wrapping up here, I am curious. This is a big issue when it comes to the psychology behind some sexual issues. Um, when you talk about traumatic sexual experiences, that's a broad term, could encompass a lot of different things. But could a past sexual experience result in premature ejaculation? So this is a, a bit of a complex question. So I want to back up here for a moment because I think it's important for our listeners to understand. We don't know – there's a lot we don't know about what exactly causes premature ejaculation between the brain-body connection. Um, one of the big areas that we look at is overexcitement and an inability to control uh, ejaculation. So when we talk about past experiences, like a traumatic sexual experience, generally, we're talking about things that are not on an excitation 
platform or an excitation spectrum. We're looking more at things that are anxiety provoking, um, things that might be uh, depressive, lead to some kind of traumatic flashback. Now, what seems to be the case is that both overexcitement and anxiety could be factors leading to a rapid ejaculation. And what exactly the the pathways are, I, I, I myself um, do not uh, have specific knowledge about why both of those pathways, which seem to work in opposite directions, could lead to a rapid ejaculation. So when we talk about past experiences, some of it could be in overexcitation, not necessarily stemming from a trauma, um, but it could be um, that uh, for whatever reason it is, um, a man is very, very receptive to partnered sexual activity. They have a history of very exciting experiences that kind of makes a slick track leading to very, very rapid ejaculation. At the same time, there could be a number of experiences where um, a man, um, let's just say he um, was afraid he was going to lose his erection. And as a response to that fear, uh, he ejaculates rapidly so as not to lose his erection during sexual activity. So totally different route, not working with excitation, working with something that probably is a little bit more anxiety-based or potentially has an evolutionary mechanism to ensure um, ejaculation. Um, But in either case, it's working down a different mechanism and whatnot. So to kind of come back to the overall question, you know, certainly past experiences could play a role in, um, you know, contributing to or causing premature ejaculation. Just important that our listeners understand there's a lot of complexity to that question because different experiences, um, meaning different emotional states and really what seems like opposite directions could both uh, separately be causing or contributing to uh, premature ejaculation. Okay. And Mark, I just want to give you an opportunity to leave our listeners with any other final thoughts before I go ahead and close it out for us here today, talking psychology behind why premature ejaculation may happen. So one point that we didn't touch on, I think is important for our listeners to understand is that going back to the notion of subjectivity, Um, premature ejaculation is also a, uh, cultural phenomenon. Uh, there are cultures around the world that don't view premature ejaculation or historically there have been cultures that do not view premature ejaculation as a problem at all. There are even evolutionary reasons why premature ejaculation might make sense, um, in terms of being the first to get seed to an egg. I know it sounds kind of primitive and basic, but there are uh, a number of reasons why premature ejaculation may not really have a an objective diagnostic um, concept. However, it does cause distress because in our world, and certainly in the Western culture, because sexual pleasure is a primary focus, as you know, absolutely it should be, the idea of extending these experiences both for personal pleasure and for pleasure of a partner, uh, this has contributed to the uh, pressure and distress that a lot of people experience with premature ejaculation. So I think it's important to have the broader uh, historical and cultural context when we're talking about premature ejaculation. And that really is to say that if you and your partner are not distressed by this, there's not necessarily anything wrong. Some people are probably predisposed physiologically that um, the mechanisms between the brain and the body that trigger ejaculation are just primed to do that a lot quicker. And if that isn't causing any distress, there's no need for alarm outside of just ensuring that everything is medically okay. Um, but for many people, this is just you know a natural wiring. Um, and then it's a matter of managing the distress and managing this in the context of the relationship so that everybody can be um, you know, working towards maximal amount of satisfaction.